السلام علیکم ایوری ون آئی ایم ہوسٹ پینے شارزو ویلکم ٹو کریئر کیمپ آج ہم بات کریں گے مسٹر علی شہباز سے جو کہ ایجوکیٹر ہیں کاؤنسلر ہیں اور لیکچرار ہیں بحرین میں یونیورسٹی میں اور ہم ان پہ جنرل ایجوکیشنل سسٹم اور کریئر ایڈوائز پہ اور ڈفرینٹ یو نو پروفیشنلزم پہ ان سے بات کریں گے اینڈ وی ول ٹرائی ٹو یو نو ڈسکس دا کرنٹ ایشوز دیٹ اسٹوڈنٹس آر فیسنگ اینڈ آئی ہوپ دیٹ وی کین گیٹ سم ریئل ایڈوائز فرام ہیم سو لیٹ اسٹارٹ دس ول بی این online interview so let's start the interview i will invite him now okay first of all i would like to ask you about your educational background and how you reached this current position you are at um first of all thanks for inviting me uh, vinish okay. and uh, understanding what uh, what is the main focus here youth development guidance um making people realize what career path to choose itself is a very yes. noble cause and i'm happy Thank that you so much. <laughs> uh, yeah most welcome i'm i'm happy that you are making people like us and many others part of this journey that uh, we can help develop the youth uh, i'm glad i remember yeah. um when i finished my high school here in bahrain um there was a lot of confusion in those days because it field was just very new and booming at the same time information technology or um ict or it so it was like a very new concept <laughs> internet uh, these was the times when we had internet cafes when when people used to mm-hmm. go visit internet cafes so everything was like so raw so new what is this feel lot of computers being involved so i was a business student and at that mm-hmm. time when it hit us i was like okay should i stay in business or should i go in it now and what happened there was a new major which came up in the market which was business information systems the other name was management information systems in oh, us right. they, they yeah and in us they called it like computer information systems i was like okay so what will happen i stay in business and i learn it and that's where i started excelling in uh, business information systems or you can call it management information systems so my degree is also in business informatics that's business okay. information systems and um, i have two masters degree and mm-hmm. one is a normal mba and one is masters in information systems so uh this is how i was kind of sure what i have to do uh i want to remain in it field with a business flavor in it and uh, that's how i continued yes there were uh, some confusion should i go to programming should i go to it networking but then i realized that um, in business information systems you get a flavor of all these technologies uh then i kept myself very open if if a, if a job role comes to me where i have to program something it will just take me 3 to 6 months to learn a new language like nowadays mm. it's python language and programming so i learn python and i start coding in python um but the core thing was very clear for me business information systems all right um, now i yeah mm. okay. and that's mm. how i ended up here i've been teaching for past almost 19 years and uh, in business information systems i also right. have this space for artificial intelligence now cloud computing mm. robotics yeah that's very really interesting because this is all uh, everyone can talk about right now ai and it and tech and what not so uh, i would like to ask you that uh, what can you suggest to students uh, to f- do or follow so they can whatever career they choose they can really enjoy it either they are at a job or studying about it or doing the doing their own business so what can they do to choose uh, the right career path for them 
I think in my field, being a lecturer at the state university here, uh, we do guidance um, day in, day out. Right. Um, I have students, uh, like just today, a student walked up to me and she told me, I'm in uh, programming, uh, computer programming. Do you advise me to change in computer networking? Mm -hmm. Just today, uh, before our interview. And I asked her, why do you want to change when you are already in programming? Why do you want to change in computer networking? She said, because my friend told me there is a there are better job opportunities. <laughs> yeah, and I, I told her, okay, then what about cybersecurity? Mm. Why don't you just do cybersecurity? Then she actually got confused. She was like, yeah, that's also a good idea. <laughs> I was like, I'm just joking with you. Stick to programming and just continue. <laughs> Because there are so many branches here. AI, as you said, Binish, it's one of them. Um, robotics is another. Cloud computing is there. Cybersecurity is there. Um, how much can we torture ourselves and how much can we learn? In, yeah, you know? true. So, uh, I have met individuals who excelled in C++ language programming. And mm -hmm. then... Uh, once they were expert in it, then they went to the next language, Java, then Python. Mm. So the core platform is the same. Uh, whatever is in front of us, let us excel in that. That's what I advise many youngsters. All Do right. not keep hopping around because you'll be jack of all trades, master of none. Mm. So uh, once you have been put in a situation uh, you're learning something, try to finish that, stick around. There will be many external influences. Oh, what you're learning is not good for the job market. This is outdated. This will, this will happen. But we yeah. really don't know what's in store for us. So uh, I learned it the hard way at times, uh, which programming language certification to go for. Mm. But then I started believing, okay, uh, God has put me here now for a reason. And why not excel in this now rather than hopping around everywhere? I mean, if I have 10 friends, five of them will convince me to do at least five different things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so how much should I torture myself? I had a friend who told me he loves history. He did his PhD in history. Okay. You know, and he told me straight that I know there is no global market. I won't be paid much. Mm. But I'm happy. You know, it's my passion. Uh, exactly. The same guy. Yeah. yeah. And the same person, uh, he's planning to migrate to Canada now because they need, according to him, they need teachers in history. Oh, so you okay. see, you know, and when he goes for interview, he can debate about history, about world history, general knowledge. So no knowledge is just because it's a new technology. It doesn't make it the best. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I love your take on it because uh, sp uh, also here in Pakistan, especially being a developing country, most of the students do face this problem that everyone is suggesting them to follow a particular field uh, that they think it is the uh, you know all the hype is about, and uh, people uh, do that, including myself, uh, being a furniture and interior designer professionally. I was also thinking to you know shift my career to. IT or uh, software development a year ago then I realized no it's not my passion I won't be able to continue it or do it uh, like I should my question is that uh, you are uh, it's very true what you said that you should stick to one thing and be a master of that then uh, there will always be you know demand of your work so my question is that how, what is the role of a teacher or an institute an educational institute in recognizing a child's or a student's passion you know what they're actually passionate about or what what their strengths are i had a few days back a first year student mm -hmm. uh, who came up to me and he's he's like probably just 20 years old. 
Okay. And uh, he came up to me and he's telling me that, uh, uh, Mister, I need a job as soon as possible. Oh. I I told him you are a full time student. Your parents have sent you in a college. You are a full time student. You are a, f- a newbie. You are in your first year. Why are you thinking of a of a job right now? Uh, okay. Surprisingly, he told me, my neighbor has a Lexus. Oh. And he wants to buy a Lexus. Uh, <laughs> I told him, just to compete with your neighbor. Then I asked him, how old is probably your neighbor? He's already in his middle age, in thirties. Yeah. So yeah. I told him, you are like probably his younger brother or a son. Yeah. You know, so don't compete with people you don't know their struggle. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So people are. comparing this comparing game first years comparing themselves with the fourth year yeah and the fourth year comparing themselves with phd holders true so this comparing game must stop immediately mm-hmm. we must stop uh, it's good to be inspired you getting inspired yeah. is a it- yeah there's a fine line between that you know being inspired or comparing yourself uh i tell students be inspired you know but you cannot there's only one elon musk in the world you know i mean um it's like uh, you know uh, one of my friend he's a very big bollywood fan okay. one day he comes he thinks he's shahrukh khan the next day he thinks he's salman khan <laughs> i keep telling you there's only one shahrukh and I'm... one salman you know, <laughs> you can't be everything so there's a lot of confusion comparison uh, comparison going on once we get into a four or three year three to four year yeah. degree we can't be jumping around mm. we have to stick to that and we have to continue i tell my students there is no shortcut to make money legally so whether it's interior designing whether it's ict engineering mechanical civil once you get in just finish what you are doing don't be inspired uh, don't be uh, so uh, i mean not inspired is good thing but don't compare yourself compare to yourself. another mm. college student and say uh why can't i be doing that and uh i know students who are into music yeah uh there uh, one student he loves playing guitar okay. and his parents always tell him you're wasting your time so um i told him keep finishing your degree on the side if that's the case so there are small dreams which are which won't harm our bigger dream or bigger investment that's fine if if it takes like half an hour every day one hour to learn a guitar i told him excel in it then you know yeah and it's healthy to take on a hobby you know something that you can do apart from the studies or your job or anything else hmm and now that guy is a guitarist teacher oh good <laughs> so he's actually making more money oh. through that short investment and his parents are happy he he graduated so but it shouldn't be vice versa we can't spoil our four year or three year degree program because of a hobby mm. uh which we may work may not work but as far as it's hobby it's fine uh yeah. we need to graduate first and then think of what car i need to buy uh who i'm planning to get married to which uh place in pakistan am i going to build my house yeah. you know so all that thoughts which comes through media some day i'm going to buy my house here okay it's good to wish fine but do the basic we graduate first um so you see when students i have seen when they migrate to us canada new zealand australia they don't have choices to jump around because they don't have the funds yeah true they have to stick to the college where they went and uh, <clears throat> go through that three or four year process do part time jobs and actually when they graduate they get good jobs there uh what what happens here in our part of the world we know if i drop out from this college i can jump to the next it's hmm. all easy to pay for it's not very costly Our parents will take care of it and we'll be fine 
our parents are going to take care and everything will be okay. So uh, we shouldn't think of a backup plan. Once we get in, God has put us there for a reason. Just continue, finish it. Um, unless some disaster happens, like the college closes down. Yeah. Or, you know, but that's very less likely to happen. 